Well, they say everything is bigger in Texas, and down in Waco, the Mars Wrigley Company has certainly proven it by making a massive Snickers bar to set a Guinness World Record. The Snicker bar is 12 feet long, two feet high, and 26 inches wide. It tops the scales at 4,728 pounds, which you might top the scales at that if you were to try to eat it all. Now, when they say Snickers satisfies, hey, they're not messing around with this candy bar. It's the equivalent of 43,000 regular size Snickers bars. Now, we can all hope this giant candy bar doesn't go to waste. Did you get that? <laughs> to waste? Keith, I don't think they connected on that one, do they? No. Maybe it's too personal, I don't know, but anyway. But with a total of 9,245,000 calories, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Now, if that doesn't take care of someone's sweet tooth when they are hangry, nothing will. Now, I'm throwing a lot of numbers around on this story, but it actually reminds me of the old math question in school. If Johnny has 30 chocolate bars and eats 25 of them, what does he have? Diabetes. Johnny <laughs> has diabetes. That's what he's got. Well, Mars Wrigley says the giant Snickers bar is going to be featured in an ad that will premiere during the Super Bowl on February the 2nd. All right, we've all heard terrible stories about breakups between couples. Someone once said that your ex-wife or husband asking to be friends with you after getting a divorce is like kidnappers asking to keep in touch after letting you go. <laughs> well, things can definitely get ugly, but should it come to a duel with swords? Let me cut to the chase. <laughs> They're turning on me, Keith. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> ah. All right, uh, let's move on. A Kansas man is asking an Iowa judge to grant him a trial by combat so he could have a sword fight with his ex-wife and her attorney. <laughs> David Ostrom said his ex-wife Bridget and her attorney Matthew Hudson have destroyed him legally, according to his court filing. He requested the Iowa District Court to give him 90 days to find Katana and Wakizashi swords for his requested battle. Ostrom cites that this type of ruling was granted as recently as 1818 in a British court. Uh, Governor? Yeah, Keith? Can I interrupt just a moment? You know, before I got into radio, I got into, I was, I was a sword fighter in college. What? You know that? Yeah. You know why I quit? No. Well, it was medical reasons. Every time I competed, I kept getting this sharp stabbing pain. <laughs> Had to quit. Well, well, Keith, when I was in college, I had this great idea to invent a circular sword. Yeah. And I thought to myself, what's the point? <laughs> okay, let's get back to the Ostrom's disagreement. I think we're safer there. The couple has been engaged in court battles for over, uh, over custody and visitation rights, as well as property tax payments. Bridget Ostrom's attorney, Mr. Hudsman, noted that just because the Constitution doesn't specifically prohibit couples battling with a deadly katana sword, it does prohibit a court from ordering sword duels between former spouses, or anyone for that matter. Sorry, Zaro. Ms. Ostrom and her lawyer are seeking a court-ordered psychological evaluation of Mr. Ostrom as opposed to a sword fright. Wonder why? You know, I think David Ostrom might want to take a deep breath and think about this old truth. Those who live by the sword often get shot by those who don't. <laughs> and speaking of Iowa, an Iowa highway was turned into a bacon festival when a truck overturned, releasing over 1,700 piglets onto the road. Interstate 35 in Des Moines suddenly became a swine affair for police and animal rescue staff. Witnesses says you could hear the wheels on approaching cars, as well as the piglets, all squealing. Squealing. <laughs> By the way, I'm reminded of the piglets that wanted to do something special for Mother's Day, so they threw a surprise party for their mom. All right, so it took rescuers several hours to catch all the piglets and load them back into another vehicle. Now, do you know what you get when you cross a dinosaur with a pig? Jurassic pork. <laughs> and what do you get if you cross a pig with a centipede? 
bacon and legs. <laughs> and do you know what type of pork archaeologists think Jesus and the disciples may have actually liked being Orthodox Jews? Bethlehem. <laughs> Bethlehem. See, ham. Beth okay, I think I better stop before the theologians get me for the last one. Uh, Dateline, Nevada. Officials in the city of Reno are trying to find a pigeon seen wandering the streets with a sombrero on. Now, in case you're wondering, the pigeon is from the United States and is not some fly-by-night pigeon. No, sir. <laughs> Reno city manager Sabra Newby tweeted photos for the public to be on the lookout for the festive bird. The County Animal Services Department wants to find the pigeon and safely remove the hat from the bird's head. No word regarding the margarita glass tucked in the bird's wing. Hey, Governor, you know, yes, this, right? this story really made me think of that great song about the sombrero, you know, from The Wizard of Oz. Which great one, song. Trey? Oh, great. It's, uh, you know that song, uh, Sombrero over the rainbow. Something like Trey. that. It's Sombrero he, over the rainbow. Do you remember what the sombrero said to the poncho? He said, you hang in there and I'll go on ahead. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the Reno bird search. You may remember our story a while back about the Las Vegas pigeons with the cowboy hats on. Well, this bird is no relation and apparently quite the party goer. In the end, gluing little hats to the heads of pigeons isn't good for the bird's health. It only proves that some small-minded person has too much time on their hands. So if they catch the guy, I think it's only fair to glue the biggest sombrero available to his head and see how he likes it. There you go. <laughs> then our next story, Mr. Howard Kirby of Owasso, Michigan, found a way to make thousands of dollars while sitting on the couch at home. Something many of you have been looking to figure out how to do this. Well, I know it sounds like one of those get rich quick ads, but Kirby really did it. He bought a couch at the Habitat for Humanity Restore in Owasso, and he was growing to like it except for the complimenting foot cushion that it just seemed too firm. Well, Kirby's daughter-in-law opened the cushion to see if it could be adjusted. What she discovered was $43,170 stuffed in the cushion. Uh, Governor, by the way, speaking of money, did I, did I tell you I had my credit card stolen last month? I didn't even report it. No, really? Yeah. Why in the world didn't you report it? Well, so far, the thief is spending less money than my wife. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> Well, I guess it's kind of like that time I saw a sign that said, watch for children. And I thought to myself, that's a pretty good trade. You're going to get letters. I am. I know I am. I get them all, all the time anyway. Might as well get some more. All right, back to the cash couch story. So Mr. Kirby had every right to keep the money, but he decided to ask the store to seek out the original owner, a woman named Kim Faith Newberry was the person. It was her grandfather's couch and he had recently passed away. Her family had no idea the grandfather had been stuffing his savings in his couch cushion. So Ms. Faith Newberry was so grateful, but said the story almost had a very different ending because her family had considered burning the couch if they couldn't find a thrift store to accept it. I've heard of people burning through money, but that would have been one for sure. And finally tonight, Danish artist Johan Dekman has decided to take the American obsession of self-help books to a whole new level by creating ones that are drop-dead honest and funny. Like this title that should have been written just for Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, and all of our impeachment-obsessed congressmen, How to Keep Yourself So Busy That There's No Time Left to Face Your Problems. <laughs> or for all you creative artists, how about this one? How to Raise the Value of Your Art by dying. <laughs> I know this one has to be a big seller with Hunter Biden. How to want it when you can't have it and get it when you don't want it. <laughs> and if you could only have one book on a desert island, why not make it this one? How to be the type of person who really wants to be a type of person. And finally, Mr. Duckman's piece de resistance. How to stay silent so others keep believing you're smart. You can find many more entertaining self-help titles all at johandeckman.com. And now, just like Kim Jong-un in a UFC fight against Conor McGregor, we got to get out of here. But never forget, we read the news. So you don't have to. 
Now, if you want more videos like that one, hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell right next to it. And if you leave a comment, positive or negative, I'll be sure that my dog Toby sees it and responds to you in kind. <laughs>